Language Interpretation, Wikipedia Article Audio Interpretation or interpreting is a translational activity in which one produces a first and final translation on the basis of a one-time exposure to an utterance in a source language. Etymology Modes Simultaneous Consecutive Whispered Types Conference Judicial Escort Public Sector Medical Sign Language Media Modalities On Site Telephone Video Venues Certifications Notes Sources The most common two modes of interpreting are simultaneous interpreting, which is done at the time of the exposure to the source language, and consecutive interpreting, which is done at breaks to this exposure. Interpreting is an ancient human activity which predates the invention of writing. However, the origins of the profession of interpreting date back to less than a century ago. Many Indo-European languages have words for interpreting and interpreters. Expressions in Germanic, Scandinavian, and Slavic languages denoting an interpreter can be traced back to Akkadian, around 1900 BCE. The Akkadian root Targamanu slash Turgumanu also gave rise to the term Dragoman via an etymological sideline from Arabic. The English word interpreter, however, is derived from Latin interpres, whose semantic roots are not clear. Some scholars take the second part of the word to be derived from parties or predium, but others have suggested a Sanskrit root. Simultaneous interpretation suffers the disadvantage that the interpreter must do the best he or she can within the time permitted by the pace of source speech and the advantages of time saving and not disturbing the natural flow of the speaker. The most common form is extempore si, where the interpreter does not know the message until he or she hears it. Simultaneous interpretation using electronic equipment where the interpreter can hear the speaker's voice as well as the interpreter's own voice was introduced in the Nuremberg Trials in 1945. In the Nuremberg Trials the languages of interpretation are French, Russian, German and English. As it proved successful, IBM was able to sell the equipment developed to the United Nations. In the ideal setting for oral language, the interpreter sits in a soundproof booth and speaks into a microphone, while clearly seeing and hearing the source language speaker via earphones. The simultaneous interpretation is rendered to the target language listeners via their earphones. The first introduction and employment of extempore simultaneous interpretation using electronic equipment that could facilitate large numbers of listeners was the Nuremberg Trials of 1945-1946, with four official working languages. The technology arose in the 1920s and 1930s when American businessman Edward Feline and British engineer Alan Gordon Finlay developed simultaneous interpretation equipment with IBM. In consecutive interpreting, the speaker is required to pause to allow interpretation. Therefore, the time needed is much greater. Traditionally, the interpreter will sit or stand near the speaker. Consecutive interpretation can be conducted in a pattern of short or long segments according to the interpreter's preference. In short CI, the interpreter relies mostly on memory whereas, in long CI, most interpreters will rely on note-taking. The notes must be clear and legible in order to not waste time on reading them. Consecutive interpreting of whole thoughts, 
rather than in small pieces, is desirable so that the interpreter has the whole meaning before rendering it in the target language. This affords a truer, more accurate, and more accessible interpretation than where short CI or simultaneous interpretation is used. An attempt at consensus about lengths of segments may be reached prior to commencement, depending upon complexity of the subject matter and purpose of the interpretation, though speakers generally face difficulty adjusting to unnatural speech patterns. On occasion, document site translation is required of the interpreter during consecutive interpretation work. Site translation combines interpretation and translation, the interpreter must render the source language document to the target language as if it were written in the target language. Site translation occurs usually, but not exclusively, in judicial and medical work. Consecutive interpretation may be the chosen mode when bilingual listeners are present who wish to hear both the original and interpreted speech or where, as in a court setting, a record must be kept of both. When no interpreter is available to interpret directly from source to target, an intermediate interpreter will be inserted in a relay mode, e.g. a Greek source language could be interpreted into English and then from English to another language. This is also commonly known as double interpretation. Triple interpretation may even be needed, particularly where rare languages or dialects are involved. Such interpretation can only be effectively conducted using consecutive interpretation. Since time immemorial, whispering interpretation has been used, known in the trade by the French term chucotage. To avoid disturbing the original speaker and those present listening to the original speaker, the interpreter's voice is kept at a low volume. To do this, the interpreter and the person requiring interpretation must sit or stand in close proximity to one another. No actual whispering is involved as this is difficult to decipher as well as being too much of a strain on the voice, the interpreter uses normal voiced speech at a low volume. Only one or at the most two people in need of interpretation can be accommodated, unless portable electronic equipment is used. This form of interpretation puts a strain on the interpreter who has to sit for long periods leaning towards the person in need of interpretation. Conference interpreting refers to interpretation at a conference or large meeting, either simultaneously or consecutively. The advent of multilingual meetings has reduced the amount of consecutive interpretation in the last 20 years. Conference interpretation is divided between two markets, institutional and private. International institutions, which hold multilingual meetings, often favor interpreting several foreign languages into the interpreter's mother tongues. Local private markets tend to have bilingual meetings, and the interpreters work both into and out of their mother tongues. These markets are not mutually exclusive. The International Association of Conference Interpreters is the only worldwide association of conference interpreters. Founded in 1953, its membership includes more than 2,800 professional conference interpreters, in more than 90 countries. Judicial, legal, or court interpreting occurs in courts of justice, administrative tribunals, and wherever a legal proceeding is held. Legal interpreting can be the consecutive interpretation of witnesses' testimony, for example, or the simultaneous interpretation of entire proceedings, by electronic means, for one person, or all of the people attending. In a legal context, where ramifications of misinterpretation may be dire, accuracy is paramount. Teams of two or more interpreters, with one actively interpreting and the second monitoring for greater accuracy, may be deployed.
the right to a competent interpreter for anyone who does not understand the language of the court is usually considered a fundamental rule of justice. Therefore, this right is often guaranteed in national constitutions, declarations of rights, fundamental laws establishing the justice system or by precedents set by the highest courts. However, it is not a constitutionally required procedure that a certified interpreter be present at police interrogation. This has been especially controversial in cases where illegal immigrants with no English skills are accused of crimes. In the U.S., depending upon the regulations and standards adhered to per state and venue, court interpreters usually work alone when interpreting consecutively, or as a team, when interpreting simultaneously. In addition to practical mastery of the source and target languages, thorough knowledge of law and legal and court procedures is required of court interpreters. They are often required to have formal authorization from the state to work in the courts and then are called certified court interpreters. In many jurisdictions, the interpretation is considered an essential part of the evidence. Incompetent interpretation, or simply failure to swear in the interpreter, can lead to a mistrial. In escort interpreting, an interpreter accompanies a person or a delegation on a tour, on a visit, or to a meeting or interview. An interpreter in this role is called an escort interpreter or an escorting interpreter. Also known as community interpreting, is the type of interpreting occurring in fields such as legal, health, and local government, social, housing, environmental health, education, and welfare services. In community interpreting, factors exist which determine and affect language and communication production, such as speech as emotional content, hostile or polarized social surroundings, its created stress, the power relationships among participants, and the interpreter's degree of responsibility in many cases more than extreme, in some cases, even the life of the other person depends upon the interpreter's work. Medical interpreting is a subset of public service interpreting consisting of communication among healthcare personnel and the patient and their family or among healthcare personnel speaking different languages, facilitated by an interpreter, usually formally educated and qualified to provide such interpretation services. In some situations medical employees who are multilingual may participate part-time as members of internal language banks. Depending on country-slash-state-specific requirements, the interpreter is often required to have some knowledge of medical terminology, common procedures, the patient interview and exam process. Medical interpreters are often cultural liaisons for people who are unfamiliar with or uncomfortable in hospital, clinical, or medical settings. For example, in China, there is no mandatory certificate for medical interpreters as of 2012. Most interpretation in hospitals in China is done by doctors, who are proficient in both Chinese and English in his slash her specialty. They interpret more in academic settings than for communications between doctors and patients. When a patient needs English language service in a Chinese hospital, more often than not the patient will be directed to a staff member in the hospital, who is recognized by his slash her colleagues as proficient in English. The actual quality of such service for patients or medical translation for communications between doctors speaking different languages is unknown by the interpreting community as interpreters who lack healthcare background rarely receive accreditation for medical translation in the medical community. Interpreters working in the healthcare setting may be considered allied health professionals. A sign language interpreter must accurately convey messages between two different languages.
an interpreter is there for both deaf and hearing individuals. The act of interpreting occurs when a hearing person speaks, and an interpreter renders the speaker's meaning into sign language, or other forms used by the deaf party. The interpreting also happens in reverse, when a deaf person signs, an interpreter renders the meaning expressed in the signs into the oral language for the hearing party, which is sometimes referred to as voice interpreting or voicing. This may be performed either as simultaneous or consecutive interpreting. Skilled sign language interpreters will position themselves in a room or space that allows them to be seen by the deaf participants and heard clearly by hearing participants, as well as be in a position to hear and slash or see the speaker or speakers clearly. In some circumstances, an interpreter may interpret from one language to another whether that is English to British Sign Language, English to American Sign Language, Spanish to English to American Sign Language and so on. Deaf individuals also have the opportunity to work as interpreters. The deaf individual will team with a hearing counterpart to provide interpretation for deaf individuals who may not know the same sign language used in that country, who have minimal language skills, are developmentally delayed or have other mental and slash or physical disabilities which make communication a unique challenge. In other cases the hearing interpreter may interpret in the sign language whichever kind of sign language the team knows and the deaf team will then interpret into the language in which the individual can understand. They also interpret information from one medium of language into another for example, when a person is signing visually, the deaf interpreter could be hired to copy those signs into a deaf blind person's hand and add visual information. Most interpreters have been formally trained in an interpreter training program. IDP lengths vary, and are usually two or four years to obtain a degree or certificate. Graduate programs are also available. In the United States, sign language interpreters have national and state level certifications. The Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf, a non profit organization, is known for its national recognition and certification process. In addition to training requirements and stringent certification testing, the RID members must abide by a code of professional conduct, grievance process and continuing education requirement. There are many interpreter training programs in the U.S. The Collegiate Commission on Interpreter Education is the body that accredits interpreter preparation programs. A list of accredited programs can be found on the CCIA website. European countries and countries elsewhere have their own National Association of Sign Language Interpreters. Some countries have more than one national association due to regional or language differences. The European Forum of Sign Language Interpreters is the umbrella organization of sign language interpreters in Europe. In Canada, the professional association that recognizes and nationally certifies sign language interpreters is the Association of Visual Language Interpreters of Canada. Under a flick holds several affiliate chapters representing a specified region of Canada. Sign language interpreters encounter a number of linguistic, environmental, interpersonal, and intrapersonal factors that can have an effect on their ability to provide accurate interpretation. Studies have found that most interpreter training programs do not sufficiently prepare students for the highly variable day-to-day -day stresses that an interpreter must manage and there is an ongoing conversation in the interpreting field as to how to appropriately prepare students for the challenges of the job. Proposed changes include having a more robust definition of what a qualified interpreter should know, as well as a postgraduate internship structure that would allow new interpreters to work with the benefit of supervision from more experienced interpreters, much like the programs in place in medicine, 
law enforcement, etc. By its very nature, media interpreting has to be conducted in the simultaneous mode. It is provided particularly for live television coverages such as press conferences, live or taped interviews with political figures, musicians, artists, sportsmen, or people from the business circle. In this type of interpreting, the interpreter has to sit in a soundproof booth where ideally he slash she can see the speakers on a monitor and the set. All equipment should be checked before recording begins. In particular, satellite connections have to be double-checked to ensure that the interpreter's voice is not sent back and the interpreter gets to hear only one channel at a time. In the case of interviews recorded outside the studio and some current affairs program, the interpreter interprets what he or she hears on a TV monitor. Background noise can be a serious problem. The interpreter working for the media has to sound as slick and confident as a television presenter. Media interpreting has gained more visibility and presence especially after the Gulf War. Television channels have begun to hire staff simultaneous interpreters. The interpreter renders the press conferences, telephone beepers, interviews, and similar live coverage for the viewers. It is more stressful than other types of interpreting as the interpreter has to deal with a wide range of technical problems coupled with the control room's hassle and wrangling during live coverage. Interpreting services can be delivered in multiple modalities. The most common modality through which interpreting services are provided is on-site interpreting. Also called in-person interpreting or sometimes colloquialized as face-to-face, -face, this delivery method requires the interpreter to be physically present in order for the interpretation to take place. In on-site interpreting settings, all of the parties who wish to speak to one another are usually located in the same place. This is by far the most common modality used for most public and social service settings. Also referred to as over-the-phone interpreting, telephonic interpreting, and teleinterpreting, telephone interpreting enables interpretation via telephone. The interpreter is added to a conference call. Telephone interpreting may be used in place of on-site interpreting when no on-site interpreter is readily available at the location where services are needed. However, it is more commonly used for situations in which all parties who wish to communicate are already speaking to one another via telephone. Interpretation services via video remote interpreting or a video relay service are useful for spoken language barriers where visual cultural recognition is relevant, and even more applicable where one of the parties is deaf, hard of hearing or speech impaired. In such cases the interpretation flow is normally within the same principal language, such as French Sign Language to Spoken French and Spanish Sign Language to Spoken Spanish. Multilingual Sign Language Interpreters, who can also translate as well across principal languages, are also available, albeit less frequently. Such activities involve considerable effort on the part of the translator, since sign languages are distinct natural languages with their own construction and syntax, different from the oral version of the same principal language. With video interpreting, sign language interpreters work remotely with live video and audio feeds, so that the interpreter can see the deaf or mute party converse with the hearing party and vice versa. Much like telephone interpreting, video interpreting can be used for situations in which no on-site interpreters are available. However, video interpreting cannot be used for situations in which all parties are speaking via telephone alone. VRI and VRS interpretation requires all parties to have the necessary equipment. Some advanced equipment enables interpreters to control the video camera, 
in order to zoom in and out, and to point the camera toward the party that is signing. The majority of professional full-time conference interpreters work for phone interpreting agencies, healthcare institutions, courts, school systems and international organizations like the United Nations, the European Union, or the African Union. The world's largest employer of interpreters is currently the European Commission, which employs hundreds of staff and freelance interpreters working into the official languages of the European Union and some others. The European Union's other institutions have smaller interpreting services. The United Nations employs interpreters at almost all its sites throughout the world. Because it has only six official languages, however, it is a smaller employer than the European Union. Interpreters may also work as freelance operators in their local, regional and national communities, or may take on contract work under an interpreting business or service. They would typically take on work as described above. The U.S. military in Iraq and Afghanistan during the early 21st century employ hundreds of interpreters to assist with its communications with the local population. No worldwide testing or certification agency exists for all types of interpreters. For conference interpretation, there is the International Association of Conference Interpreters, or AIIC. Specific regions, countries, or even cities will have their own certification standards. In many cases, graduates of a certain caliber university program acts as a de facto certification for conference interpretation. The most recognized interpretation certificate in PR China is China Accreditation Test for Translation and Interpretation, short for CADI, which has certificates both for translation and interpretation.